you're, we're gonna see some transfer into that L2. Feel free to take this vision to your parents. It, it's a good one. <laughs> uh, so what do we know as best practice when working with the bilingual population and English language learners? We know that an additive approach um, has been um, supported by research. And what an additive approach is, is when we incorporate the child's L1 native language, their culture and their background into their L2 learning experience. Um, not long ago, I was at a Head Start facility with preschoolers, and the two teachers are monolinguals. And in the morning, circle time, the teacher's like, hola, hola, and I was like, you know, and she was like, no, I'm really learning my Spanish, Cisa, like, you have to help me. <laughs> like, we'll work on that. Uh, but just incorporating, like, the child's native language, incorporating their, their culture, making them feel at home, making them feel like we know that you bring a lot of knowledge. We know that you bring a lot with you, and we value that. That's an additive approach, and that's important for us to do with our English language learning children. Um, another thing that we know from research, like my colleague Rachel was talking about, are collaborative models. So we know that peer-mediated models work when we use you know, the buddies and the peers. We also know that when we um, include the parents, um, we have literature to also support that some of these models work as well. Um, and then we know that dual language programs and interventions are best practice. Now, in the ideal world, we would be providing therapy in English and Spanish and Mandarin and in English and in all the different languages, but a lot of us are monolingual, right? And a lot of our teachers are monolingual. So what are we doing about that? We know that here in the United States alone, Students from K to 12 who have been identified as English language learners, have, the number has grown a lot. <laughs> so in the span of 15 years in our public school system, uh, we've seen an increase of a million students. And the numbers, like Rachel said, keep on growing. Um, just a raise of hands, if you work with a child who is either multicultural or bilingual or learning English as a second language. And I think that's what brings you all here today. A lot of us are seeing them in our schools, in our clinics, in our hospitals, in our universities. Um, we know that in 2017, 37% of children enrolled in Head Start were from Hispanic and Latino origin families who primarily spoke Spanish at home. 37 may look like a small number, but that's a lot of kids. <laughs> that is a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. So, as a Hispanic myself, as a clinician at heart, I walked into this PhD program, and I walked into my research wanting to do something about this, wanting to do something about this population and for this population, and wanting to support those monolingual clinicians and teachers who are working with them. So what are some of the problems that we're seeing? <clears throat> we're seeing that the majority of teachers are monolingual English speakers, and English is typically the primary language of instruction. Another problem that we have and that we're seeing is that some of these young English language learners are at risk for failing to meet academic standards when entering kindergarten. The standards don't change whether you know English or not, and we know that, right? The tests don't change. We have the same standards for all. We also know that many of these um, young English language learners are struggling to develop the necessary English vocabulary skills to learn how to read and write. And lastly, and that is where my project comes in, is that there is a lack of evidence-based materials and procedures to support monolingual teachers and SLPs who are working with this population. So what do we do? <laughs> How do we build this bridge? Um, like I said before, this project um, was, it was started by my advisor, Dr. Holbeck, um, and it was followed, 
think Rachel also um, did some of some of her work with this project. And now I'm giving it a little bit of a tweak. And this study is intending to analyze children's verbal and nonverbal engagement when presented with dual language books. So let me break that down a little bit so we can all understand. Um, I am using the bus story. This is a, a wordless book, wordless picture book. So it's a picture book. Um, it's been used for several studies in the past. And so this book was audio recorded on an iPad. We used an app, which I'll tell you later, uh, that you can use as well in your practice. We used this app to record the books and we did two modalities of the book. We did an English-Spanish version of the book, and then we did an English-only version of the book. Um, the participants were our 20 preschool children that are currently enrolled in Head Start. So they are from the ages of three, nine months, to our oldest one, I think, is like five and one. So, you know, four and five-year-old children who are all Hispanic, Spanish-dominant, English language learners, they all have a minimum of 50% English output as screened. So I went and I screened all the children. Um, and apart from them being exposed to Spanish at home, the parents speak only Spanish. Uh, they have been in Head Start enough to already learn some English, okay? So we divided up these 20 children into two different groups. And the books were presented by a monolingual English speaker. So we had an awesome research assistant. She was great. Mm -hmm. uh, monolingual English speaker who pulled each kid out of the class with the iPad. The kids were excited because iPads, as we all may know, are very attractive to children, mm -hmm. right? And we asked the child, do you want to go read a book? So they went into a small room. And all these interactions were video recorded and audio recorded. And she went through the story. So the story talks for itself. She didn't have to read it, right? So she puts play. And the English-only group heard the story only in English. So the story went on. She stopped every two pages and asked questions. Like, what happened to the bus? Oh, no, who? So what, where, when we have, like, WH questions. Um, and then the child would respond or not. Uh, a prompt that we use, because I feel like some people have asked before, we told the child, like, you can tell me in Spanish if you want, so that they know, you know, we're using this additive approach, even though we're presenting it in English only. And so that we went through the whole book, and then at the end of the story, we asked the child to tell the story back. Okay, now it's your turn, now you tell me the story. And the child went through the book and told us the story. Um, so that was the English only group. And then the Spanish and English group got the story in both, right? So they, the book was Spanish first and then English. So el bus, whatever, whatever in Spanish. And then in English, then the uh, research assistant will stop and ask the same question in English. Um, and so you have to see, I mean, for me it was, it was fascinating because you know, you're looking through the videos and you see the kids when they hear the Spanish, they're like, <laughs> Wait, that's my language. <laughs> you know, and then they'll look at the English, like, monolingual, you know, clinician who's there. They're like, Wait, okay, this is, this is, this is cool. Um, so they both heard the story. They were asked factual questions. And what we're, what we're measuring and the ultimate goal of this study was to measure uh, expressive language skills, so verbal output. We transcribed all of the interactions. Um, we coded, we're in the process of coding, um, and we're gonna analyze for verbal output. For those of us who are researchers, or those of you who are researchers, I'm just learning, uh, we use SALT to do that, and we're looking for specific markers of language. Um, and then we're also measuring nonverbal engagement. Now, this is an important piece because the literature tells us that engagement is crucial for learning. When a child is engaged, he will learn better. 
And so we are using a tool that measures attention span. This is quantic, these measures are gonna be quantified. Attention span, eye gaze shifts, enthusiasm, and persistence. So there's a rating scale that we use. Uh, we are coding the interactions that were video recording. Um, and I don't have any results yet, but we will soon. So stay tuned. Maybe you'll see us published somewhere, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, so what is in it for us as clinicians, as researchers, as professors um, that we're out in the field? <clears throat> I am, we are hoping to see increased nonverbal engagement. So increased verbal output for those children who receive the book in Spanish and in English. So dual language books, we're hoping that increase children's output verbally. And then we're also hoping to see the nonverbal engagement is also increased when the child is aware that the clinician, that the teacher, that whoever is in front of them <laughs> values their L1, I'm hoping to see that they're gonna be more engaged, they're gonna be more excited to learn, and they're gonna be more excited to participate in whatever the task is at hand. Um, and just wanted to share the practical tool that we used to record our books because many of you may have iPads or some sort of tablet. So we used uh, the Puppet Edu app, Edu, Edu, whatever, however you say it, app. Um, and so this is a very like friendly app that you can use to record books, to give to your parents so that they can record books in their own language. And that way we can ultimately help our dual language learners um, and set them up for academic success. Thank you. <laughs>